So Revenue Forum uh, is a non-profit initiative which is started by me in 2008. And at that time, I only organized half-day seminars in Stockholm. Right now, what we do is webinars. We hold these on a Thursday every six weeks. Uh, half-day seminars, which we're going to start again uh, beginning of next year. We do that in Benelux, Scandinavia and the Baltics. More to follow. And we have whole day events. The first one being held, had, had been held on the 12th of October. That was a whole day um, held simultaneously in Stockholm, London, Rimini and online. You're still able to see the best part of this day. Uh, and I will talk to you about it uh, after in the, at the end of this uh, webinar. Episode of today is called Travel Statistics for the Hotel Industry, and we've invited an uh, expert panel that will talk to you about the subject. Our excellent four speakers will each get five minutes to talk. The exception is the first speaker, uh, who is from STR Global. That's so much statistics to show that they're going to get 10 minutes for it. But all speakers will use a Pecha Kucha format, which means that the presentation slides will also <laughs> change after 20 or 30 seconds. Um, participants from this webinar, uh, you are a broad mix of listeners from all over Europe, uh, ranging from two star to five star, uh, independent to major chains. We will try to make this webinar as interesting for you all. Uh, thank you, Anne-Marie, for inviting me. Uh, yes, my name is Alina and I work with STR Global, um, a key account manager. And today we will just show um, some historical performance across Europe and briefly mention about the upcoming um, predictions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sonia Morena and I've been with the Hotels Network for the last four years. Um, helping hotels improve the growth of their direct channel through the use of personalization and acting on that data with benchmarking. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, this is Alin Lazar. I'm product owner at Ray Tiger, and um, I will talk about the distribution landscape. Thank you. Hello, this is Stefan from HQ Revenue. Um, we are from uh, HQ Revenue. We provide market data for the future, but also historical data from your PMS. And uh, we're really looking forward uh, to this webinar to help you look into the future a little bit. Put yourself on mute. My name is Anna-Marie Kudbanski, uh, and I'm founder of Tacticon uh, Consultancy. So apart from actually organizing these parts of these, these webinars and seminars, uh, we have a consultancy which is specialized in revenue management and what we do mainly is outsourcing and uh, audits. But enough about me, let's talk about the first speaker then. Um, let's see if we have the presentation ready. Yes, the presentation. Thank you, is ready. I hope Alina is ready as well. Thank you. I am ready. Yes, thank you. Uh, so as I've mentioned a um, couple of minutes ago, I have um, I am with STR Global. I have been working in my current role for approximately two years and a half. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with our company, we have been partnering with, with the hospitality industry for more than 30 years now. We are collecting hospitality data and return various uh, benchmarking reports um, and analytical um, analysis as well. Uh, which are mainly aimed to help the industry with their uh, pricing uh, decisions. Um, today we will have a look at um, historical performance across Europe. As I've mentioned, um, we will show um, some data for key gateway cities, and we will try to understand how these gateway cities are recovering to pre-pandemic levels, especially when compared to regional uh, areas. We will close with just a few mentions on our predictions um, ahead of our no uh, November forecast, which is due to be issued uh, next week or anyway by the end of uh, this month. Uh, any questions not answered uh, during this session, uh, I will be more than happy to just follow up with, uh, with an email. On this slide, we look at a rolling seven uh, total room inventory and see how the US and Middle East occupancies have recovered to almost 90% of 2019 levels. China had almost recovered and overdid 2019 around October 2020, 
but there are no COVID policy cost decreases to almost 40% of 2019 levels. Europe has seen a steady upward trend throughout the summer months, small dip in September, but holding strong. We look closely at Europe here versus Middle East and US, the, the, the continent is showing similar patterns. Occupancy slowly recovered during the months of um, during the summer months of 2020. Similar pattern in 2021. US see some spikes around the 4th of July and Labor Day at the beginning of September. Middle East helped by Expo is really um, powering ahead. In the next slide, we will look at, um, at rates. Uh, so here we look at rolling 28 ADRs, which are indexed to 2019, US and Middle East, both regions following similar trends throughout 2020, with the exception of a spike in Middle East towards the end of summer and autumn. Summer months of September in the US saw the rates fully recovered and even pacing ahead of 2019 levels. Again, Middle East, which was helped by Expo, um, the event canceled in 2020 and postponed to 2021, really achieving higher rates than 2019 by even 15%. On the next slide, we will look at rolling 28 ADRs in Europe uh, at the, since the beginning of 2020. First lockdowns, which saw um, major decreases, the region improves during the summer months. Um, Christmas holidays in 2020 were around 70% of uh, 2019 levels. May 2021 onwards, we see an upward uh, trend. Um, and on this slide here, we look at um, countries across Europe that performed similarly in terms of occupancy uh, until approximately August 2020. Russia, that had less rigid restrictions, was the top performer and really paced ahead up until July 2021. Uh, Turkey also enjoyed some uh, premium demand as well, again, a country that saw lighter um, restrictions. Um, ADR is the big surprise. Rates held better and recovered much quicker than what was previously forecasted. Countries across Europe have followed similar trends um, with some outliers. We have seen in the previous slide how Russia and Turkey enjoyed more premium demand, demands. We can see here how this applies to rates as well. Turkey really the outperformer way ahead of 2019, a trend that continues. Netherlands at the bottom uh, at approximately 72% of 2019. If we analyze the performance by collapsed class, so two classes aggregated, mid-scale and economy sector have overall recovered occupancy um, better. Uh, US, and U US in September 2021 versus 2019, we can see how it almost fully recovered. China, uh, in China, the, uh, the sector, um, the performance across classes is more similar, achieving almost 80% uh, of uh, 2019 levels. Uh, Middle East uh, is different where we saw that the luxury and upper upscale actually performed uh, better. The rate perspective, again, mid-scale economy in light blue, uh, sees a better rate recovery. In Europe, luxury upper upscale exceeds 2019 by just under 5%. Um, on the next slide, we will have a look uh, instead of year to date, September 2019. Um, well, apologies, I think I went ahead. So now this is occupancy uh, September year to date 2021 versus uh, 2019. Um, from, from this perspective, cities across Europe um, achieved, uh, so we can see here again the outliers. We have mentioned in the previous slide how uh, Russia had achieved higher uh, occupancy levels. Um, a lot of yellow, so between 30 and 60% of um, 2019. Um, things improve when we look in, in recent months. So here we see September 2019 only, much greener picture and no red whatsoever. So no gateway cities across Europe achieved, um, achieved occupancies below 30%. 
Um, many fully recovered, so we can see Moscow at uh, almost fully recovered. We can see Kiev, 98%, Moscow, 82%, uh, et cetera. Okay, so when we look at rates, year to date, September 2021 versus same time 2019, we can see Istanbul um, has overachieved um, almost 60% above 2019. Uh, Athens, Zurich, and Budapest, um, some markets in Russia, almost fully recovered the rates in Rome with 97% of the year to date 2019. Paris, Vienna, and Amsterdam are the markets suffering the most, achieving almost 63% of 2019 rates. Now, in STR, we don't only report on historical data, uh, so supply, demand, and revenue, but we also collect occupancy on the books. And we are able to uh, look 90 days ahead or even 365 days ahead in approximately 86 markets uh, globally. We don't collect any rates. We only look at um, rooms booked, so deducted out of um, total inventory. This data is obviously very important because it helps to monitor how demand is coming back. It looks at pickups and also looks at cancellations uh, week on week. Here we look at the occupancy on the books until the beginning of February 2022 for London versus uh, regional UK. I think this is the first time on, when London actually paces ahead, but this is overall a very good and promising uh, slide because up until a few months ago, the trend would have been much uh, flatter with demand, um, with demand building up closer to the uh, arrival date. Uh, this slide looks at uh, total, room, um, avail total rooms available throughout. Um, so this looks at, um, oh yes, occupancy on the books across uh, all classes for various uh, key gateway cities. We can see how weekends are, um, are pacing ahead. We can see uh, demand picking up across the, um, the winter season and the Christmas uh, holidays. In terms of groups uh, and events, uh, this, um, this section is still very reluctant to come back. Um, we have seen a steady increase in the US despite the uh, Delta variant. It now, where it now indexes at approximately 60% of 2019 levels. We have had conversations with uh, customers across US, across uh, Europe, across the Middle East, and they've all confirmed that the level of inquiries are going up so at least there's more uh, there's more interest but we are even though we, we're not seeing the, um, the the events materializing so europe is currently at about 20 percent of 2019 levels in terms of group demand uh, here we see a more a more cautious approach uh, probably due to government and people being more uh, reluctant to gather uh, transatlantic traveling has just been relaxed a couple of weeks ago, so hopefully that will see some um, demand being uh, picked up. Um, on this slide, we look at the impact of several upcoming events. So um, in Scotland, we have, uh, we have had COP26, uh, which attracted a lot of demand. Uh, Glasgow was full, and not only Glasgow, but um, um, surrounding areas as well. Uh, Edinburgh saw a lot of overflow as well. Uh, March, we have um, the rugby event in Edinburgh and in Barcelona, we see a Congress uh, event with demand already reaching approximately 40% of, um, of rooms being booked. Now, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, forecast is going to come up um, at the, at, the, uh, at the end of next week. Um, I can only, what I can only say for the time being is that it will see an improved version versus our oldest um, edition. Uh, ADR has recovered a lot better than what we, uh, what we thought. Um, so some, um, some regions will, that will actually see um, an upwards revision. So thank you very much for this. Uh, this was my presentation. Um, as I said, any questions, just feel free to address them. Uh, what we cannot answer today, we will just follow up with, uh, with an email. Thank you, Anne-Marie.
No, thank you, Alina. You spoke right into the heart of a revenue manager, right? So give us some statistics and we're happy. And it was also nice to see the impact of restrictions, actually. Finland being quite restricted and you see it, of course, automatically in the numbers. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Well, without further ado, let's see if our next speaker, Sonia, is ready to, uh, to start her five minutes of fame. Thank you, Anne-Marie, and thank you, Alina. Um, my name is Sonia Morena, and I'll be focusing on the statistics specifically related, uh, related to the direct channel. Uh, so for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the Hotels Network, uh, we provide benchmarking on the direct channel so that hotels can learn by using real-time competitive data from your destination in order to make actionable decisions through personalization in order to increase website conversion. We do this by analyzing 100% of the direct booking funnel, which doesn't only look at who books, but also who visits the website, who's searching in their booking engine and everything they do before they book or don't. And we do this by actually comparing your individual hotel to um, a number of different comp sets. These different comp sets can include brand, destination, uh, and our global network from the hotels network, all completely for free. And we even give the hotels the ability to build their own comp sets so that they can compare to specific competitors directly. Since Alina did such a great job providing a review of the European market, I'll be diving in specifically on the Swedish market. However, after the webinar, if you'd like stats on Denmark, the Netherlands, UK, or any other markets, please let me know, we have them at hand. So one of the first learnings you'll see from Sweden is that they're experiencing their lowest conversion in both the homepage and in the booking engine since May. Uh, for the month of October. Traffic to the homepage was at its highest in July and has slowly, been has slowly been declining since then. However, booking engine conversion has slowly been increasing since July, hitting its highest peak in September. Elite Hotels of Sweden does a really great job of improving or actually performing better than the, the typical homepage to booking en engine conversion we're seeing. They use a layer in the homepage to create urgency around the winter offer and they also want they grow their loyalty base. In one week of running this message, the brand experienced a 5.4% uplift in homepage to booking engine conversion versus the previous week. Nobis last month did an excellent job of improving the booking engine conversion by 24%. They targeted a 15% off message only to people with a 0 to 40% intention of completing a reservation. These users are most motivated by a discount. And they also expanded their marketing database by 144 new emails. Another learning is that the international traffic in Sweden is slowly returning. To act on this data, I wanted to take an example from Denmark, since hotels there have been experiencing a much higher rise in international traffic at a much quicker rate. An example is Charlotte Haven in the center of Copenhagen. Its second source of traffic was coming from, from Germany. So to target that traffic, they created an exit message, so retaining users, by highlighting the benefits of booking direct only to the German traffic and redirecting them immediately into the booking engine as they were about to leave the homepage. Since activating the message, they retained 20% of their German traffic. Another learning is that in Sweden, visit, um, the visitors by uh, device, mobile is the primary source of traffic followed by desktop. It typically ranges around 60% of the total traffic on the website, except in July when we saw an 8% increase. However, when we look at conversions by device in Sweden, um, desktop is still considered the preferred source uh, for bookings, especially in the last two months when the difference between mobile and desktop um, is at its highest with a 4% difference. So there's actually a, 
a, a way to act on this data? And what can we learn from this? Well, you want to capture those guests who are on mobile much earlier in their discovery phase. Here's a great example of Ligula. They wanted to capture more of their mobile traffic that was searching before they went to explore other hotels. To do this, they enticed their mobile users with a mobile exclusive offer and improved mobile engine conversion by 38% versus the previous time when they weren't running that message. The length of stay in Sweden um, searched is actually 1.6 nights, while the length of stay booked is 1.5 nights. Um, and there's a way for hotels to perform even better than this. So to action on this data, here's an example from Burns Hotel in Stockholm that averages a length of stay booked longer than the length of stay that we see in the market. They use a layer in the homepage and also in the booking engine, as we're seeing here, uh, to encourage users to stay longer and benefit from a discount. These messages have improved the length of stay search by 22.6% since running this message and the length of stay booked by 46.6% uh, versus the previous period. The last learning that we see and our all-time favorite is disparities. The disparity frequency has been on the rise in Sweden since August. It's the blue line. So what you'll see is, however, well, however, the amount has been decreasing. So the, the OTAs are becoming a little bit more sneaky in the way that they, they undercut your rate. So here's a quick way uh, to action on this data, and it's to add a price comparison with real-time price matching to delegate discounts only when the OTAs are undercutting you in order that you uh, reassure every guest that you're the best slope, that your direct website is the best place to book, which it is. Thank you so much. Um, and Anne-Marie, I'll let you take it from here. Well, thank you very much for this, Sonia. Uh, interesting stuff. And I, let me let me ask you a question about rate parity when we uh, when we do the discussion panel. Perfect. But I'll leave that as a cliffhanger for now. Let's see if we can go to our next speaker, maybe. Uh, Aline, uh, I hope you're ready. Um, sure. Yes, I'm. I'm ready. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's kick it. My name is Aline Lazar. Um, I represent Ray Tiger. I've been working in online distribution for some time. Our job is to make sure travelers are finding and booking your hotel wherever and whenever they search. I'm going to take the next few minutes to talk about the distribution landscape. I know distribution is not as sexy as revenue management, but it's actually vital for securing revenue, increasing occupancy, and attracting desired guests. In 2021, we've conducted a research together with some of our top partners, and we'll share some of the results in the next slides. The constantly changing market restrictions have pushed hotels towards a more agile strategy, which led to the need of a more dynamic online distribution. We identified a much more clear tendency to balance and simultaneously manage price, booking windows, and cancellation policies. When it comes to managing cancellation policies, one of the reasons for skipping on them was the hassle of aligning the different OTAs, which led to many properties to just avoid the complications in managing the listings in multiple channels. The data we got, it's showing that the cancellation rate dropped by 17%, and, and this is year on year, um, and now is, is almost back to pre-COVID levels. Hence, it might be time to have flexible policies um, so you could take advantage of bookers' interest for flexible rates with a lower risk of cancellation. If your market is still behaving slightly different and you know, your, your fear is about not having enough time to get another booking if it gets canceled, it's an understandable fear and hence it should be mixed in a dynamic way uh, with non-refundable policies as well. And if you're still worried about it and if you usually get fully booked, it might be the right time to, to overbook. The thing is that the, the hassle of managing policies in a dynamic and agile way like made us see the need of an enhanced distribution engine, which would englobe not only availability, rates and inventory, but a much wider scope. Our research has shown that 
managing promotions across multiple channels suppose complications as well. And the normal behavior is to just lower the price from the channel manager. And that's not a very good practice. And it leaves opportunities on the table and not, not taking the advantage of the exposure channels are offering. We believe the industry is, is going towards integrating promotions as well and you know, making it a basic feature within the distribution landscape. And actually, Agoda, Booking, um, Expedia, um, Go, uh, Ibibo, for example, they have all released their promotions API and integrated them with some channel managers. Despite of still being in very low levels, we believe price promotions will go back to pre-COVID levels as well. And I actually think hotels learned from the 2008 crisis and did not drop their prices like crazy. And you know, having decent prices will actually enable the reactivations of promotions as well. It might still take a while to go back to the same level, uh, you know, because promotions are usually linked to non-refundable rates, which yeah, lately they are avoided by bookers. But on the other hand, non-refundable rates bring immediate revenue and, and cash is now oxygen. And from our data, the share is still half of what used to be. So from our point of view, what we recommend is to not go crazy and, and just create promotions without a strategy. Um, you know, perhaps there is no point in promoting the, the price in markets um, from where you already have good demand, but you might want to think about creating some specific country promotions you know, or, or certain market promotions. Um, and one last fact related to distribution is that almost all channels have lately migrated from room price to occupancy price. And experiments are showing that not having a tailored solo traveler price results in 5% drop in conversion for solo travelers and 3% drop in overall conversions. The research done by booking.com was showing that properties that set a different price for occupancy, they see a potential increase of 3% uh, in revenue. And by specifying different prices for occupancy, they can reach more people in the search result, um, making it easier to just fill up bigger rooms. All right, so the, the key takeaway points um, from, from this um, Pecha Kucha, um, cancellation rate is almost back to normal. So it's time to manage policies in a more dynamic way. Promotions are already part of the distribution landscape. And um, rate personalization actually starts with occupancy prices and the entire industry is going into that direction. Thank you for your attention. Anne-Marie, uh, back to you. Well, thank you for your very interesting um, uh, presentation, Aline. Um, a reminder to the participants, uh, we will ask all questions in the panel discussion afterwards. If you have any questions, just feel free to put it on the chat on the question and answers. Uh, and until that, let's see if we can go to our final speaker of the day, uh, Stefan Koro. Hello, everybody. Um... Yeah, my name is Stefan from HQ Revenue, and um, to, to start the presentation, um, I like to all ask you to grab the phones, which I bet everyone has next to the to the desk somewhere. Uh, open the camera and uh, get everybody their phones, and let's start it. So today we actually create a little bit of travel statistics. Travel statistics is a wide range and a wide topic, but uh, let's actually create some demand live. So uh, with scanning the QR code, um, you are actually creating some demand into Potsdam, the worldwide known metropole south of Berlin. No kidding. Actually, this is not travel statistics. And this is something which I just want to point out on this stage when we're looking into future statistics. Everybody be careful what you believe. It's super, super important. What can we actually believe is what our guests has given us. So the classic uh, way to look into travel statistics for the future is looking into what the guest actually does. So they have a budget for their travel. They're looking for a specific location with their budget. And at the end, well, how do they choose the hotel? How do they choose me as a hotel here is the price value, the price value, what can I offer to actually to the to the guests at the end of the day. So our post pandemic guests will actually probably the most uh, interested person into these three factors. 
how do I start this? Um, you have to first look onto your own data. On the right side, you see a short example how crazy it changed in the past year. Everyone, I think everyone who's looking now into their on the book sees these numbers. This is just one specific day example. So yesterday, 97, tomorrow it's uh, 67 again. So replacement of groups, new rules. Whatever you're doing um, into travel statistics, and this is what we're looking into now, you have to validate your data in a dynamic way. So dynamic way means the same dynamic as you're on the books that the data is actually. So I'm going to compare myself. All this data, what you see here, we have many des destinations on HQ revenue available. Just give us a shoot. This one is a couple of them in Europe. Me versus all. Me versus all means all hotels in the market, not only my competitors. I want to see the full picture. So what's actually around the market. So from today, the next 365 days, I want to see what's going on. Seeing that, for example, the US market is crazy, already positive looking into the far future. When it comes to cities like Berlin, we are very, very quiet. Taking Berlin as an example, I have to take my own data and compare it to my segment afterwards. So taking my star segment, in this case, I took a four star segment as an example. Everyone can do this online even for themselves. Um, Compare myself versus all of them, compare myself versus the demand. Demand, or oh, what's that? Um, you see already a correlation between demand and rates. Certainly, this is a clear mirroring where high rates is, is probably a high demand prediction. Prediction is the next key topic. So prediction is a forecast. So everyone be careful. We are talking about, again, believers. So believers, uh, Justin Bieber, whatever, it's, it's the weather forecast which can infect, uh, influence the, the business short term. It can be the price development for the next three months. It can be occurrences like um, holidays, events, whatever, some big happenings as well as, but for the long term, and this is what the guest is sometimes searching for, is even the quality of my hotel. Here we see a nice picture for the next 365 days, how we currently think from the status quo for the market is how the turnout will be. So now that I know the demand and my price, I have to actually compare myself super deep, and that's the offer. So the offer means I take my price versus the value. I look on the restrictions. What am I selling? I look onto rate types. I look into room types. And of course, I have to specifically find myself into my competition for the future in terms of price versus value. So what is the guest looking for? It's privacy, it's space, it's benefit, and this will not change in the next 365 days. Unfortunately, Corona is still there. And this means we have to be efficient. Efficient, like everybody knows, there's a revenue manager probably having 10 jobs now, thanks to Corona, as was not only revenue management anymore. We have to look together into the future. That means when you look into efficient data of use for the future, please combine data, combine the data like the ones from the hotels network or direct from your website, combine the look to book rates, combine the, the pickup data, combine the market data, and really, really try to take the best learning in the most efficient way. Don't waste your time on global analytics. Looking into combining data and looking into straight away what's going on. So this is a quick example of the price development. Um, how did prices change? For example, the left side for Christmas, different destinations. Stockholm, we see Christmas is super going down. The next week, or we probably call it the next wave in Germany, it's starting already. Um, prices are dropping. The optimism of the hotel years are actually going down. And this is what we have to say. This is what we can predict for the future and this is actually what we can where we can eat the data from and this is where we have to source the data from so source the data means validate the source look and what data you're actually using to predict your own future we we'll look on your needs on your problems and actually analyze them as efficient as possible and with this you can then start actually to support your own business with evidence um i put this uh, little quote down there don't trust the any statistics you did not fake yourself, which was actually not said by Winston Churchill, I read now on Google. Um, by the way, Google is uh, really nice in publishing interesting data. That was from my side. Uh, if you'd like to look into more further data into destinations, just give me a shout on HD Revenue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna-Marie. No, thank you so much, Stefan. And thank you also so much to, to the speakers so far. It's been uh, an enjoyable uh, uh, half an hour, I think we've been into. Let's see if we can uh, uh, give some questions to you. And I got the first question uh, uh, from one of the participants. And I love that one. So thank you, Julia, for that. And it's, it's, it's asked to, to Aline. 
So uh, now that Amex has bought Expedia, uh, what do you think the future will be of distribution? Will, will, uh, will, be, will GDS become old news, for instance? Do you know? That's a very tough question. You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> okay, it's, uh, it's not easy to, to say that, you know, GDS will probably not become obsolete in the next few years. Uh, like we, we said 20 years ago that GDS will become obsolete and it never happened and, and bookings just increased year by year. Um, so I, I don't see any um, end nearby. Um, how did this distribution look? Well, I, I think it will be more dynamic. That's for sure. And, and let's look at policies, for example. Um, you know, now they are kind of static content. So you can, you, you can just have one policy per rate plan or, um, you, you know, if you go to booking, you can create maximum six policies. But just imagine having an algorithm which can actually change the policy of the rate plan um, maybe 100 times per day based on who is looking to, to book your hotel, um, based on, uh, you know, that user's uh, cancellation ratio, for example. So I, I think it's, it's going to just be more and more dynamic. That's how it's going to look to me. Yeah, and with dynamic, you mean you mean the, the, the cancellation policies, right? Or... Uh, just the, the full content. Okay. The full content, even even pictures, uh, they could actually be shown um, like personalized content based on who you are and and what you're looking to to see. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah, that that's the direction we're going into. Yeah, I think when when uh, when you come to this question, like okay, well, GDS become old news. This is also we've we've been discussing this quite a lot ever since Amex purchased well, uh, not Expedia, but then uh, Agentia. So the a part of Expedia, uh, I think we we did see like a, a change maybe in 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 in, in uh, uh, payment, but not so much yet. But then the thing actually, I think with GDS, and I don't know if if this is something that the other panelists can say something about. But then, what I understand is that travel agencies actually are trying to move away from the old the the, the old GDS platform because I mean it's it's been there quite a lot and it's quite quite long and it's 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 a bit old fashioned though i mean i think still that um, travel agencies will have quite an impact uh, on our uh, on, on our travel actually my prediction is a little bit so that i think travel agencies so um, whether or not they're booked through the gds's or not so if it's like the corporate travel agencies or it's like the the leisure travel agencies i think that guests are looking for much more security so who can give them that security? Well, travel agencies, because they they not only can uh, help you get aware of which restrictions apply, but also if you get stuck somewhere, they can help you come back. Uh, and I think to my perspective, please panelists say if you have another opinion, but in my perspective, I think that part actually will help the travel agencies. And with that, maybe even GDS um, um, traffic. Do, do does any of the people have an on uh, a panelist have an I'll, opinion? I would that? probably I would probably add to this um, the the fact uh, of the of GDS itself. So besides the fact that it's a, a US uh, channel primary, to be honest, it's not a EMEA. It's probably not the focus market. However, um, the accessibility via um, Expedia, giving that example, so they are the first. They were the first ones who can access GD rates selling it on an online platform to to a commercial purpose to a private person. Before GDS was a fenced uh, fenced area where only travel agents actually could access. This may, might change the fact, and this may actually give, to be my personal opinion, give GDS a small renaissance to be an even more more flexible shooting it to different channels. And as it's so fenced in its use case, it might be the most straight channel we we're gonna have in the future. Mm. Yeah, will be interesting to see. Um, mine, is, mine is not a comment, uh, it's just a question. I think it would be curious to understand how GDS is adapting and how fast they're adapting to the new consumer trends. Um, I think Aline was the one mentioning about the solo traveler. 
um, you know, are they implementing any packages or even COVID safety uh, related um, concerns, you know, it's the main concern nowadays when we travel, just ensuring that, that hotels are uh, have implemented measures to to make sure that you know spaces are uh, clean, etc. So would be would be just interesting to understand if GDS keeps up with with consumer uh, expectations having changed recently. Yeah, not not only um, health related information, but also um, sustainability and and yeah. green yeah. kind of hotels, uh, which yeah are coming already hmm. yeah and as nicolas also just like stated in the, in, the, in our questions or in our chat box uh, hotels are being requested to highlight their uh, health and safety measures in their uh, gds's um, um, so yeah i think actually um, health and safety i think for for the, the information about health and safety is very important i think the otas are also very much pressing us uh, on just like uh, updating this regularly um and that actually has to do with the sense of safety yeah but i think it's a very good remark thank you Aline. if i move, may move away to another question because uh well uh sonia you mentioned uh, rate parity i will come to you in a moment because i think i have two questions about rate parity and i think the first question, I, I don't know if I'm putting you on spot, Stefan, because I know that you have like rate parity uh, comparisons in your tool. What we see, uh, what you, you see just like, um, of course, booking and Expedia is, is going on in, in different phases in, uh, okay, how they handle uh, rates uh, uh, for hotels right now. And I don't know if the hotel uh, participants also see the same things, but then for, for our hotels, we just see that booking has actually, they, they just um, go and well uh, undercut the, ho the hotel's own um, uh, public rate. Uh, previously, what we could see, it was like, um, you could see that they just like took the lowest rate and then just uh, pu published it. Uh, but now it seems that they just publish whatever. Um, so there is a, a, a question to you, Stefan, if you see the same thing, that was the first question to you. I have another one on rate parity, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so basically, rate parity is, um, <clears throat> we have a little bit of a, a trouble. So with the beginning of the pandemic, most of the, and this is, I think, Aline will confirm it, the distribution in, in revenue management got really on pause. Like mostly it was just a fire brigade of revenue managers trying to, to get the fires low. Uh, the consequence was that the OTIs took the chance and just messed around where they could. So besides stuff like booking pace, that means they reduced the commission and so on. Um, we see it especially, so we are, we are jumping as, as a customer kind of on the websites to, to, to show the prices. Um, which which is sometimes we, we're getting really into trouble with the customer saying, hey, but this is not the rate which I'm published, why you show me wrong rates? And I listen, but this is what we see. This is what the customer sees at the end of the day. Um, yes, definitely. But this is, uh, it's not only it's not only booking, it's it's all the other ones playing the same game. Um, what is surprising is that in, in, the, in the meter search, it's pretty quiet right now. Um, so, so the big meters are not playing that messy in the currently it's the OTAs themselves who are messing around which can be, and this is what I'm telling everybody, it's somehow your own fault if you give them the chance to. So there's nearly, uh, most of the countries you can make a bit uh, forbidding it or just switch off this booking pace direct, for example. Okay, well, that's a good good test to do. One of the things actually that, that Expedia is now very much onto hotels about is the, the, the mobile booking rate from booking.com. Because apparently this 10% discount that, that, that you get on your mobile rate, they can uh, bo booking can do this on all rate plans. Expedia cannot do that yet, which means that actually their non-refundable rate does not give a discount. So yeah, then booking goes under uh, their rate. But then this is maybe a technicality. Um, typically, they ask the hotels to, uh, to, to um, uh, stop doing um, mobile rates com campaigns. Uh, and yeah, you can, you, can, you can argue if you can do that or not. Um, Aline, do you do you have any remarks about that? I know I'm putting you on the spot before I go to uh, Sonia. Well, I was just thinking about um, what can actually come next, which will um, make the rate party even even 
um, wider. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the membership phase. Like if we look at TripAdvisor, they, they came up with this membership fee. So you, you pay $99 per year and you actually have access to net rates. Like that's a very smart way to actually break rate parity in, in, in a way. So I, I think more channels will come with this model. Um, yeah. Sorry, I mean, does that mean that Expedia gives up at their own commission? Sorry, um, TripAdvi TripAdvisor you've mentioned. Yeah, because you, you, so you just pay $99 per year to TripAdvisor and you have access to net rates, but also channels can actually show their prices and channels have the option to give up some of their commission. Like it will be some kind of price war inside yeah. TripAdvisor for members only. Yeah. Very interesting. I think so. Yeah, I, I actually uh, I, I did I didn't know that yet. Uh, so, um, uh, well, I don't know if any of the participants have have any um, 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 uh, uh, anything on it. Sorry, I'm talking and reading at the same time. I'm supposed to be a woman and do that kind of thing, but I can't. A uh, simple solution is only to supply one rate to OCAs, run all discounts, member rates, etc. only on your own website. Yeah, that could be done. Uh, thing is, actually, what we see is that um, the OTAs then also can undercut their own, uh, their own uh, um, go to the same level of your website rate uh, and just like publish that. Or oh, Sonia, um, over to you, because you, you said you were talking about the impact of rate parity. And I, I actually do think that this must have a very big impact on direct bookings, right? Yeah, so from, from the stats that we've been seeing, I mean, Sweden's not being affected as badly as some of the other areas around Europe that we're seeing. Uh, booking.com is typically the book. Well, it's, it's a close run between booking.com and hotels.com uh, when it comes to a higher disparity frequency. Uh, but Sweden in general, they do a really great job of maintaining that parity. And also one of the things that we're seeing is that the amount by which they undercut is, is not that high either. So it's still something that can be a little bit more manageable for the, for the Swedish hotels to kind of well, deal with the OTAs on a one-to-one on -a -one basis. Uh, but I, I guess it really depends on, on the market as well. Yeah, do you see that there then are markets, if, if, if Sweden is not that much um, influenced by it, are there markets in which in which actually this, this rate parity issue is much stronger? Yeah, so I was actually just, while, while, um, while you're having the conversation, I, I was looking at Q1 versus Q2, Q2, uh, Q2 stats, which are a little bit outdated, but uh, just having a look, the Middle East was significantly affected by Agoda. They had around a 39% frequency in disparities uh, in Q1, a 33% in Q2, that was the highest market. Latin America is another big one, uh, but typically in Europe, they maintain a little bit more parity than, than some of the other markets that we're seeing. And when, when we track disparities, we're tracking them in real time because the price, we have the, the price comparison and it's picking up, it, it picks up what the user is see, seeing as the best available rate, and then it immediately goes to the OTAs at the time of that exact search. Uh, we tend to see a, a bit of a higher frequency in disparities than a rate shopping tool, for example, because they're being done in real time and those games tend to be played um, at, at various times of the day. One of the other things that we are seeing is that if the user is coming from um, an international market, like for example, the rise in uh, Sweden's international traffic that is being seen month over month, uh, more disparities are coming from IP addresses that maybe the hotel is not able to pick up themselves because you have to log in through a VPN uh, in, in the, the the location of the, the user and then try to spot that disparity. And that's one of the difficulties that a lot of hotels have is spotting the disparities that are outside of the market. Um, and, and that's where price matching in real time can, can be a quick fix while in the background, the revenue managers are trying to solve the problem. Mm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Justin. 
I actually think uh, what I, what I liked about uh, the presentations is you almost like the the, the uh, future demand statistic is much more available to hotels now than it was in the future than it was in the past. Now, Stefan, you also do you also offer uh, future demand, but where where do you get that information from? Um, so it's it's a mix. Very important is all our own data, so that doesn't mean that we are buying data from TripAdvisor or Google, as we just proved. Kind of Google is sometimes not really reliable, but the same with TripAdvisor. It's, it's not a it's not a picture. So what we are doing is um, we're taking all the customers what we have, of course, but as soon as we have the customer there, we are always taking the full markets. Um, that means we are as soon as there is a market to us available new, uh, we are shopping the full markets, and this gives us historical comparison down to the very let's say to the very amenity available on that channel. Mm -hmm. And um, as we are not shopping only on one channel, it's multiple channel destinations. And so that means even on, on hotel websites, what we are shopping at, um, we can we can make a breakdown, let's say it that way. So you know how much availability is on the market. On the other side, you know how high the price is. And uh, I always say the best example, if, if there's in, in one destination from day to the other one, there is no suites available in all the five-star hotels. There's a big impact that uh, possibility that there's Justin Bieber coming because he's booking all the suites and all the five star hotels just in advance. And then he's announcing the uh, the, the big um, roadshow for him. So so this kind of detection is what we are doing. And uh, of course, it's it's a picture of momentum. So there is there is no guarantee that it's going to end like this is just the of course, also historical data, what we have to see, okay, the development, if it keeps the way it does the market, then it might be the chance that it ends like this. Yeah, okay, well, interesting, thank you. Um, I, might, I mean, uh, we are a bit concerned about groups in, in Q2, especially in the, in, in, the, in the next year. I don't really know if, if SDR sees that on, on, on group statistics. Um, I mean, we, what you see now is that groups are coming back uh, quite quickly, uh, and that's not really that strange because, I mean, during pandemic, we haven't had any, any groups, of course, and you, you need to have these meetings. I mean, I am a good example of that. The event that we held in October, we, it was postponed twice, but of course we need to do that. So we did that in October as anybody else. Um, and we see, we see that actually also going on in, in Q1. I know I'm putting you all on spot, but then um, you are statistic magic. Um, 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 magic. Do you see anything happening for Q2? Um, is this is this for me, Anne Marie? <laughs> yeah, I think I think you would be the one to be answering to that. But then uh, feel free to uh, to reply to that if uh, the other participants as well. But I was thinking actually you might might be the person to know. Yes, of course. So. Um... As I think I've briefly mentioned that uh, US group demand um, has recovered a lot faster than we have seen in other areas around the globe. Um, Europe is only still at approximately 20% of 2019 levels. Uh, we know that most of the re restrictions really affected the gatherings. So events in general uh, have been the ones that have been heavily penalized. Um, inquiries are increasing, so at least there is some interest now that restrictions have eased, uh, you know, companies have started to uh, meet again in person. I think two years of having had meetings uh, virtually, <laughs> people have had enough, so um, I think that um, we don't expect groups to fully come back in 2022. Uh, 2023 um, will be a better year, but um, not next year, as far as we're concerned. Okay. Well, good to know. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's see what happens next year. I'm always positive, uh, it's like when, in, when, when it comes to looking at next year's. Um, I think I have also a question, maybe uh, once more to Stefan. I, I was in a webinar yesterday uh, where people just like said, okay, well, you know, hotels are so um, slow to adapt to, to changes. Uh, my point is, well, I mean, they're a bit understaffed. I mean, it's, 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 it's quite stressful to work in hotels, but then uh, do you think that, um, so how fast do you think hospitality is reacting on change? I thought you might be a good person to ask that question. I thought yesterday. Um, well, uh, I think some hoteliers will, will get mad with me, but uh, in average day, I would say they take 10 days. Uh, as this is something what I can say, um, 
if if you're just looking from the from the rate shopping perspective now, uh, if something is happening besides the fact that Google never forgets and most of the people still rely on Google, um, is the fact until everyone realizes, oh, I have to change something, or even if it's if it's a single property, what we're looking at now, until group confirmed, group um, cancelled, a group uh, took out of the books. Uh, there might be even 10 days in between. The problem is not that uh, they don't want to do it faster. Sometimes there's technical issues. Sometimes there is the tracking issues that uh, revenue manager was on holidays and uh, no one took care of their Excel sheet stuff. Um, and then that's, that's the kind of stuff. So the delay is an average, I would say, 10 days. Um, honestly spoken, and this is, of course, also for us always to say, as soon as everyone, anyone says he can predict the, the future, keep in mind there is 10 days delayed because uh, there's nothing else what you can see. You can probably see the guests looking on your website. Um, Sonia, I guess you, you see it, how, how the demand is actually going live there, but until the, the revenue manager reacts on this, don't tell me they are doing it tomorrow. Uh, that would be the dream of all of us, uh, but that would mean that the systems work merging. And this is what I was saying, the merge is there super important also, yeah. Okay, thank you. I think we're coming at the quite at the end of the webinar. I just wanted to have a question to maybe Aline, um, because I mean, we've been putting you on the spot so much. So let me ask you a question about what you actually talked about. Uh, and I think also I'll just relay that back to Sonia. Uh, you talked about promotions. Um, would, you, would, you, would you see uh, their impact on during pandemic? Um, would you would you would you have uh, would you would you be able to to let us to, to tell us like okay what 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 did you see any trends during pandemic more promotions and what impact do you think that they had on hotels? Right. So probably at, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, I you know when when demand is actually zero, like you can hire salespeople, you can uh, give rooms free of charge, you, you're not gonna get bookers. Um, so, of course, when, when there is no demand, uh, just keep your price up and, and I know try to reduce cost, don't run promotions. Um, so, of course, at the beginning, they did not work. Um, in, in the middle of the pandemic, um, some hotels started running some promotions, um, but not, not too many because the prices were already low. Like That was the main reason. Um, and, and, you know, when you run promotions, usually they are non-refundable and nobody wanted to, to book a non-refundable rate. So they were not 100% working. You know? But um, even, even, like, even if they were not working, it, it was understandable to have some promotions running uh, because, like I said, you, you need to bring some cash and, and that's actually the, the way to do it um, by just setting a non-refundable rate. So yeah, yeah no. So I, I would just summarize that no, they did not work properly. No, 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 no. But to your point, non-refundable wasn't really working, especially not in the beginning. Sonia, do you see? Because I mean, uh, your uh, service. By the way, is it completely free for everybody? Yeah, the bench bench direct is completely free. Okay. Um, I think because what you, what I noticed in your presentation actually is is a bit the impact of promotions, but then more the impact is the fact that you just like highlight them on your website. Mm -hmm. um, would you advise to have them only on the website? You mean versus mobile or oh, versus any of the uh, the external distribution systems or the channels? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that we found, I, a lot of hotels started reaching out to us because they didn't have the ability to, uh, I think at the beginning of COVID, to communicate various COVID policies and different things like that. So to be able to easily communicate that um, prior to offering any types of uh, promotions was the fact that you had to communicate that you were a safe location, that you know you had COVID procedures in place. Then we started seeing a trend coming from booking.com strongly pushing on the mobile offers in order to motivate bookings. So we found that a lot of hotels started reaching out to us in order to be able to do something similar on their own website. 
um, especially on the, mo well, particularly on the mobile side, because with the OTAs, they were offering a 10% on mobile uh, discount. They were generating a lot of bookings from that, and they wanted to be able to compensate or at least show a similar discount uh, via mobile through the use of like a, a, a promo code, because, uh, you know, maybe they didn't have the ability to create a specific rate code only for mobile, uh, depending on the booking engine that they were using. So that was something that we also saw hotels doing throughout COVID. And the biggest I think the biggest impact that we saw or feature that we saw a lot of people um, using was that if they couldn't drive direct bookings uh, for, you know, various travel restrictions or, or whatever was happening throughout in whatever market, um, the email subscribe was working well. So they thought, okay, if we can't generate bookings, then let's grow our marketing database. So that way, when we do reopen or that when the borders do reopen, that way we can leverage our uh, email database in order to let people know about the various campaigns that we have. And this is actually something that we're seeing now with Black Friday approaching. Uh, so with Black Friday happening next week, hotels are doing two different things. Prior to releasing the Black Friday offer, um, what they're doing is they're saying, hey, sign up to get the early release of the, the Black Friday, leave your email and you'll be one of the first people to find out because there's a limited inventory. And then they follow up this campaign um, by adjusting the message, creating a countdown clock and then saying, okay, the offer's here, log in, uh, go to the website, go on mobile, whatever it is. Uh, and these are some quick tactics that they've been using uh, throughout COVID. There's also things around, you know, if you don't want to discount your rate across the website because it doesn't at the end generate any extra bookings, it only decreases your average daily rate or your average booking value is, and, and we saw this in the Novus example, is that um, you, you have a targeting capability that you can benefit from on, on your direct website um, through the platform. And it we are able to assign how likely someone is to complete a reservation. So we can say, okay, Anne-Marie, this person on your website right now has a 35% chance of booking. And then you can actually only give discounts to, a, to people with a lower likelihood to book and then motivate only those people without cannibalizing your ADR for all of your traffic, which is typically the way people do it because they only have the ability to do a 15% off on the entire website. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. lots, lots of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And with that said, uh, this is actually already at the end of our webinar. Uh, really hope you enjoyed it and will be able to attend also next time, which will be on the 30th of January next year. Uh, we're going to talk about the future of distribution. Uh, speakers are from Tacticon, NetAffinity, made, made in Louise and more. So we're probably going to attack a few of the discussions we already had today. Actually, one of these things that I just like notice is whatever the subject we're going to, we, we, we're uh, trying to find, we always end up talking about booking in Expedia. Um, furthermore, um, on the 12th of October, as I already said, uh, we organized an event uh, and uh, we did this together with an international team and it resulted in an event which was held simultaneously in, in Stockholm, London, Rimini and in online. Uh, Aline and Stefan actually were joining me in Stockholm. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, well, we got incredibly positive uh, feedback, and it was for me one of the most scary things I've ever done. But it, it, it was, it, I, I really uh, love the result. For those of you who missed it, you can still access the best of this uh, of this day of these sessions that our international keynote speakers were holding, also the discussion panel that that we were streaming online. Uh, they are available up to tw uh, April 2022, so you have a few months of inspiration um, uh, ahead if you go to the website leadershipfromgales.com and for only £18 you get like uh, hours of inspiring the speakers. Um, well, then maybe if we go into uh, the final, final, final part of, 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 uh, of this webinar, do you have any final remarks to make? Maybe shall we start with Alina and just like work our way down to, to, the, to, the, to the various speakers? Do you have a final note that you want to tell to tell the participants? 
not really. It was very. Um, I thank you again for for the invitation for having extended the invite. Um, I myself uh, learned a lot. Uh, I left the hotel industry um, about three, four years ago, and it was really interesting to see how um, how things have evolved. Uh, not so interesting to see how um, hotels are still fighting with freight parity. It used to be my nightmare when I worked in hotels. Um, uh, thank you very much to, to the other speakers. I have personally learned a lot from today's session, so thank you very much. Me too. Sonia, do you have anything to add? No, just want to say thank you to everyone who joined today and, and yeah, make sure that you access as much data as you can and you leverage that data in order to make actionable decisions. Mm, yeah, thank you. So wise indeed. Aline, do you have anything to add to that? Oh, just I would like to thank, thank you and thanks everyone for joining the webinar. And um, yeah, don't forget, I, I mean, the, your product is fine. Distribution is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Stefan. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, of course, uh, don't believe everything what is there out of statistics uh, and find the source of, of the statistic and then uh, then you can work with it. Before this, don't work with this stuff. However, uh, thank you very much, Annemarie, for that great uh, session. No, uh, thank you very much to the speakers. Um, I completely um, uh, agree with Alina. I learned a lot. Um, for me, it was also a part of like, like memory lane that day in March 2020 when all occupancy just like like uh, went away. You can clearly see that in your numbers, of course. But I also love the way that we have a lot of access to statistics. Um, uh, hotels can make like really, really, really wise decisions with that. Uh, and well, um, look forward to to see these systems also also live. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for an inspiring hour. And thank you to the participants. You, we will. I will send the recording afterwards, so you will get access to all material. Please let us know if you have any questions. Otherwise, hope to see you in January. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.